What's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of Top 5. With the world reeling from the recent global virus situation, everyone is practicing social distancing, and many people are finding themselves quarantined at home with lots of time on their hands. With that in mind, there have been numerous movies created with this basic underlying storyline. Bug is created, Bug can't be contained, Bug escapes and decimates everything in its path. From more feasible movies like Contagion or Outbreak, to more middle of the road movies such as Children of Men, all the way to the extreme with movies like the Korean zombie apocalypse movie Train to Busan. We have had more than our share of these cautionary tales over the past few years. That's why we are compiling a list of the top five best virus outbreak movies to watch while quarantined. So sit back, relax, and grab some hand sanitizer, a roll of toilet paper, and some popcorn as we introduce you to this cosmically contagious catalog of infectious feature films. Let's scrub in and get started. Number five, outbreak. When a disease is discovered in the jungles of Africa, Colonel Sam Daniels, played by Dustin Hoffman, is sent to investigate. When he reports back to his superior officer, General Billy Ford, played by Morgan Freeman, he pleads with him to put out an alert immediately, but the general refuses, stating that the disease is too far away and not airborne, making it impossible for it to spread to the U.S. Meanwhile, a monkey from the infected area of the jungle is captured and brought to the U.S. illegally. It was then smuggled out of customs by an employee, Jimbo Scott, played by Patrick Dempsey, who subsequently tries to sell it to a pet store in a small California town called Cedar Creek. After the sale falls through, Jimbo releases the monkey into the wilderness outside of the town where the virus spreads rapidly. Later, Jimbo arrives by plane to Boston, where he quickly collapses and subsequently dies. After hearing this, Colonel Daniels requests to look into both of these cases, but for some reason, General Ford denies his request again. With nowhere else to turn, Colonel Daniels contacts his ex-wife, Robbie Coe, played by Rene Russo, who works at the Center for Disease Control, to look into the situation. Together, they soon discover that it's the same disease as the one they had initially investigated back in Africa. And after a high stakes cat and mouse game, Colonel Daniels and his trusty pilot, Major Salt, played by Cuba Gooding Jr., solve the mystery and discover the truth dating back to 1967, when a viral outbreak in the same area of Africa was kept under wraps while the head of the USA MRIID, General Donald McClintock, played by Donald Sutherland, and General Ford weaponized the virus for possible biological warfare. As the situation reaches its crescendo, the small town is minutes away from total destruction as General McClintock scrambles to cover up his involvement, ordering the bombing of the town and the shooting down of Colonel Daniels, who, at this point, has now captured the host and is heading back to Cedar Creek to create the vaccine. As the plane approaches the target site, Colonel Daniels delivers a heart-wrenching speech that convinces the pilots to veer off course, dropping the bomb in the sea. At witnessing this, General Ford has a change of heart and places General McClintock under arrest. Luckily, Colonel Daniels arrives back in Cedar Creek to save Robbie in the nick of time. Number four, Train to Busan. Siak Wu is a fund manager who is separated from his wife. He's a workaholic and an absentee father to his young daughter, Su An. Siok Wu 
misses his daughter's singing recital. For her birthday, she convinces her father to take her to Busan to see her mother. The next day, they board the KTX 101 at Seoul Station. As the train departs, a young woman runs onto the train unnoticed. She turns into a zombie and attacks a train attendant, who also turns. They both proceed to attack a majority of the passengers, and they too become zombies before infecting others throughout the train. After a huge struggle, the main survivors fight through the zombie horde with the help of dark tunnels to the front train car, where the rest of the passengers are sheltered. A blocked track at East Daegu train station forces the survivors to stop and search for another train. The train conductor starts a locomotive on another track, but is thrown to the zombies while trying to save an injured Yon Suk. A flaming locomotive derails and traps the remaining survivors. But Siak Wu finds a way out. And Su An and Siang Kyung to escape onto the new locomotive. After fighting off zombies hanging onto the locomotive, they encounter Yon Suk, who is on the verge of turning into the zombie. He was bitten when the conductor saved him. Siakwu manages to throw him off, but is bitten. He puts Suan and Siang Kyung into the engine room. Teaches Siang Kyung how to operate the train and say goodbye to his daughter before retreating outside. As he zombifies, he thinks of the first time he held his daughter in his arms and smiles before throwing himself off of the train. Suan and Xiang Kyung get off at Busan and begin walking through a train tunnel. Snipers are stationed on the other side of the tunnel. Unable to verify their infection status from afar, the soldiers are instructed to shoot them. However, after hearing Suan singing, they realize that the newcomers are not infected. Suan tearfully sings the song Aloha Oai, which she wanted to perform for her father at the beginning of the film. Number three, children of men. In 2027, after 18 years of global human infertility and depression, the world is on the brink of collapse and humanity faces extinction. The United Kingdom, one of the few nations with a functioning government, is deluged by asylum seekers fleeing radiation and plague. In response, the UK has become a police state as the British Army rounds up and executes immigrants. Theo Farron, played by Clive Owen, a former activist turned cynical bureaucrat, is kidnapped by the Fishes, a militant immigrants' right group. They are led by Theo's estranged wife, Julian Taylor, played by Julianne Moore from whom he separated after their son's death during a 2008 flu pandemic. Julian offers Theo money to acquire transit papers for a young refugee, Key, played by Claire Hope Ashitin. Theo obtains the papers from his cousin, a government minister who runs a state-sponsored collection of salvaged art. Theo agrees to escort Key in exchange for a large sum of money. Luke, a Fishes member, drives Theo, Key, and a former midwife, 
Miriam towards Canterbury. They are ambushed by an armed gang and Julian is killed. When the group is stopped by the police, Luke kills the officers and the group hides Julian's body before heading to a fish's safe house. Key reveals to Theo that she is pregnant. Julian had intended to hand Key to the Human Project, a supposed scientific group in the Azores dedicated to curing infertility. However, Luke persuades Key to stay and is voted as the new leader of the fishes. That night, Theo eavesdrops on a discussion and learns that Julian's death was orchestrated by the fishes so that Luke could become the leader. They intend to kill Theo and use the baby as a political tool to support the coming revolution. Theo wakes Key and Miriam and they steal a car. Escape to the secluded hideaway of Theo's aging friend Jasper Palmer, a former political cartoonist turned pot dealer. The group makes plans to board the Human Project ship, the Tomorrow, which will arrive offshore from a refugee camp at Bexalon Sea. Jasper proposing having Sid, a camp border guard to whom he frequently sells drugs, smuggle them into Bexhill, masquerading as refugees. When the fishes discover Jasper's house, the group flees while Jasper stays behind to stall the fishes. Luke shoots and kills Jasper as Theo watches from the woods. The group meets Sid at an abandoned school and he helps them board a bus to Bexhill. When Key experiences contractions at a checkpoint, Miriam distracts a guard by feigning religious mania and is taken away. Inside the camp, Theo and Key meet a Romanian woman, Marichka, who provides a room where Key gives birth to a baby girl. The next day, Sid informs Theo and Key that war has broken out between the British military and the refugees, led by the fishes. Having learned that they have a bounty on their heads, Sid attempts to capture them, but Theo kills him with a car battery, and they escape. Amidst the fighting, the fishes capture Key and the baby. Theo tracks them to an apartment building under heavy fire. He confronts Luke, who is killed in an explosion and escorts Key and the baby out. Awed by the baby, the British soldiers and fishes temporarily stop fighting and allow the trio to leave. Marichka leads them to a hidden boat but stays behind as they depart despite Theo employing her to come along. As British fighter jets bomb Bexel from a distance, Theo reveals that he was mortally wounded by Luke. He tells Key how to soothe her baby, and Key tells Theo she will name her Dylan after Theo and Julian's lost son. Theo dies as the tomorrow approaches. And Key tries to wake him to see that they've been saved. As the credits roll, the sound of children laughing and playing can be heard in the background, possibly implying that the fertility crisis was solved thanks to Key. Number two, I am legend. In 2009, a genetically re-engineered measles virus 
originally created as a cure for cancer, turns lethal. The virus kills 90% of the world's population and turns almost 10% into vampiric cannibalistic mutants called dark seekers. Three years after the outbreak, U.S. Army virologist Lieutenant Colonel Robert Neville, played by Will Smith, lives an isolated life in the deserted ruins of Manhattan, unsure if any other uninfected humans are left. Neville's daily routine includes experimenting on infected rats to find a cure to the virus, searching for food and supplies, and waiting each day for any immune humans who might respond to its continuous recorded radio broadcast, which instructed them to meet him at midday at the South Street Seaport. Flashbacks reveal that his wife and daughter died in a helicopter accident during the chaotic evacuation of Manhattan. Neville stayed behind on the island. Neville's only companion are his German shepherd, Samantha. Some mannequins he regularly talks with and the characters on film recordings from video stores. At night, he barricades himself and Sam inside his heavily fortified Washington Square Park home to hide from the dark seeker. One day, Sam follows a deer into a building. Neville cautiously goes in after her and finds the deer's corpse along with Sam. But the building is infested by dark seekers. Both escape unharmed and the attacking dark seekers are killed by the sunlight. Now Neville finds a promising treatment derived from his own blood. So he sets a snare trap and captures a female dark seeker. A male dark seeker goes after them, but is blocked by the sunlight and returns to the shadows. Back in his laboratory and in the basement of his house, Neville treats the female without success. The next day, he is ensnared in a trap similar to the one he used to capture the female. By the time he escapes, the sun is setting and he is attacked by infected dogs. Neville and Sam eliminate them, but Sam is bitten during the fight. Neville injects her with a strand of his serum, but when she shows signs of infection, Neville is forced to choke her to death before she turns. Heartbroken and driven by rage, he ventures out and deliberately attacks a group of dark seekers. He is rescued by a pair of immune humans, Anna and a young boy named Ethan, who have traveled from Maryland after hearing his broadcast and are making their way to a survivor's camp in Bethel, Vermont. Neville angrily argues that no such survivor camp exists. The next night, a group of dark seekers who followed Anna and Neville back the night before attack the house. Neville, Anna, and Ethan retreat into the basement laboratory, sealing themselves in with the female test subject. Discovering that the last treatment was successful, Neville assesses the situation as a dark seeker rams himself against a glass door to break in. Neville draws a vial of blood from the woman he cured and gives it to Anna, before shutting her and Ethan inside a coal chute in the back of the lab. He then takes a grenade and kills the Dark Seekers at the cost of his own life, saving the cure. The next day, Anna and Ethan arrive at the survivors' camp in Bethel. They are greeted by military officers and other survivors, and Anna hands the cure to the officer. Anna narrates how Neville's effort and sacrifice to save humanity 
ultimately became legend. Number one, contagion. Returning from a business trip in Hong Kong, Beth Emhoff, played by Gwyneth Paltrow, has a layover in Chicago where she hooks up with a former lover. Two days later, in her family home in suburban Minneapolis, she collapses with seizures. Her husband, Mitch Emhoff, played by Matt Damon, rushes her to the hospital where she dies of an unknown cause. Mitch returns home and finds that his stepson, Clark, has also died from a similar disease. Mitch is put in isolation but is found to be immune. He is released and returns home to his teenage daughter, Jory. In Atlanta, representatives of the DHS meet with Dr. Ellis Cheever, played by Lawrence Fishburne of the CDC and express fears that the disease is a bioweapon intended to cause terror over Thanksgiving weekend. So Cheevers dispatches Dr. Aaron Mears, played by Kate Winslet, an EIS officer, to Minneapolis to investigate. Now Mears tracks down the outbreak back to Beth. Mears later becomes infected and dies. As the virus spreads, Chicago is placed into quarantine and looting and violence break out. Conspiracy theorist Alan Krimweedy, played by Jude Law, posts videos about the virus on his blog. In one video, he claims he has cured himself of the virus using a homeopathic cure derived from forsythia. People seeking forsythia overwhelm pharmacies, and Krimweedy, having faked his illness to boost sales of forsythia, is arrested for conspiracy and securities fraud. Using an attenuated virus, Ali Hextail, played by Jennifer L, identifies a possible vaccine. To cut out the length of time it would take to obtain informed consent from infected patients, Hextail inoculates herself with the experimental vaccine and visits her infected father. Now she does not contract the disease MEV-1 and the vaccine is declared a success. The CDC awards vaccinations by lottery based on birthday. By this time, the death toll has reached 2.5 million in the U.S. and 26 million worldwide. In the film's epilogue, a bulldozer knocks down a tree in a rainforest, disturbing some bats. One flies over a sty and drops a piece of banana, which is eaten by a pig. The pigs are slaughtered and prepared by a chef who shakes hands with Beth Emhoff in the Hong Kong casino, transferring the virus to her. That's it for this edition of Top 5. What are your thoughts on our choices? Did we get these right? What movies would be on your watch list? Comment below with your list, and as always, thanks for coming by. We'll see you on the next video.